Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the wild northern Rockies near Calgary, Alberta, Canada. The granite mountains rise over a mile high from the valley floor, which is around a mile high itself. The mountains here form a geographic barrier that runs from north to south and are socked in by fog and snow for much of the year. As you can imagine, the valleys between the mountains are lush and green, crowded with a ground-level canopy of alder, berry bushes, and wildflowers, like yellow glacier lily and fireweed. Pine and fir trees compose the upper canopy in the forests and provide shade and shelter from the wind. The animals of the area are black and brown bears, elk, moose, deer, cougar, and wolves. Fur bears and common forest rodents like squirrels and chipmunks round out the typical Rocky Mountain cast. In the evening time of May 4, 2021, esteemed Associate Professor of Environmental Management and Sustained Development at the University of Calgary's Haskane School of Business, 59-year-old David Lertzman headed out for his second of two daily runs. He decided that he would run up Moss Trail, just above town today. David taught graduate and undergraduate classes on leadership, as well as sustainable development with indigenous peoples. He also directed wilderness retreat classes in the nearby area of Kananaskis. David headed up the trail, which has its rolling aspects, then climbs to a beautiful view. Passing by such scenery while running increases the hormones that relax your body and improve mental peace. It's an excellent way to exercise in such wild and natural surroundings. As David trotted along the trail, unbeknownst to him, he was not alone. A sow grizzly bear and her cub were near the trail he was jogging on and hiding just out of David's field of vision. Springtime is a dangerous time to encounter a sow and a first-year cub due to the aggressively protective traits bears are known for, and this incident was about to take a very scary turn. As David jogged past the sow and her cub, her protective instincts kicked in and she charged. David had no idea she was closing in on him from behind and was admiring the view from the top of the high escarpment he was climbing up. David left around 6 p.m. for his jog and by 10 p.m. his wife Sarah decided to go out and look for him herself. She drove to the area and began walking up the trail. As she approached the steep area of the trail, she looked up the hill and over the sides for evidence of where her husband could be. She was expecting he might have injured himself and was unable to come back down the trail. She was hoping to find him and help him back home to take care of him. She found no evidence of what occurred. After being notified, the authorities gathered a search party and sent out a helicopter with a spotlight and search equipment. They combed the trails and valleys in the area for a short while before they located him. His body lay crumpled alongside the creek at the bottom of the ravine and was discovered at 2 a.m. He was recovered and taken to the coroner's office for examination. The coroner's report would reveal one of the most intriguing and perplexing bear attacks in the recorded history of bear attacks. After reviewing the injuries on David's body, the authorities concluded that his 900-foot fall down the steep embankment was preceded by a bear attack. Apparently, the sow bear overtook David as he jogged up the trail on the steep slope and shoved him, causing him to tumble down the cliff to his death. They used track evidence on the trail as well as other physical evidence to discern this. They also indicated that the attack was not predatory and that the cub was not involved. Sarah had spent a few hours in the area and didn't notice any bear sign or reason for alarm while traveling her husband's route. She actually stood at the exact location of the attack but saw nothing noteworthy or concerning in the area. Authorities were quick to point out that she could very easily have suffered the same or a similar fate as her husband. Upon learning of David's death, Sarah indicated that she could feel him transitioning into the spiritual realm and that the bear did so as well. She felt as if they were wrapped around each other, spiritually intertwined in this terrible incident. She pointed out that David died very near his 60th birthday, which seemed fitting to her. I'm not sure what all that spiritual aspects of her sentiments mean, but it's clear David meant a lot to a lot of people. This set off a three-week period of game officers setting traps and baits out in the area to try to locate the bear for examination and to understand why this tragic event occurred. They placed culvert traps in a few places and watched for bear activity in the area. 
After the three weeks passed, they concluded that the sow and cub had moved on and were no longer in the area. They removed the traps and scaled back their operation to find her. They also reopened the trail system to the public, deeming it safe for humans again. The community mourned David's passing at a memorial. He was eulogized as a beautiful and unique, marvelous human being and someone who changed people's lives each time he taught a class. David lives on as the work he began by developing inroads with indigenous people groups in the area is championed by University of Calgary's indigenous strategy called Iitapo Ta, which aims to help businesses heal the wounds of the past. In the summer of 2021, there were three fatal bear attacks in the province of Alberta. Two of the attacks were only 40 kilometers apart, begging the question, could this same bear be responsible for more than one attack? Is the cause for such a large increase in bear attacks and human fatalities due to human presence in bear territory, or is there more to it? Do you think the cub will apply what it saw during the attack and have a higher chance of human attack? Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks, and a special thanks to our patrons who support us with monthly donations of their choosing. Cole Rodriguez, Cruise Control, Aurora, April Donovan, Ryan Cernicky, Char, Chris Marlar, Wayne Washington, Fluffy Feet, Cheyenne, Greg Schaefer, and Drone Adventures. Don't forget to check out our merch store for a back-to-school discount on Scary Bear Attacks branded apparel for yourself or your favorite teenager. As a valued member of our human community, please be careful out there, especially in bear country.